and welcome to the next 100 Days podcast. My name is Graham Arrowsmith. And my name's Kevin Appleby. So, Graham, you might recall we have Michael Heppel on the show for our Christmas episode. Yeah. And shortly afterwards, I joined Michael's Team 17. And I was introduced to a, a chap who showed me around Team 17. Uh, his name's Dave Rogers, and he's joining us this morning. Well, welcome, Dave Rogers, to the next 100 Days podcast. Thank you. It's, uh, it's great to join both uh, you, Graham, and Kevin this morning. Looking forward to a great conversation. Well, you, it sounds like you've um, uh, been living in the Midlands for a while because you've kind of got this sort of strange accent. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an understatement. Yes, yeah, so I'm born and bred in the heart of the West Midlands in the Black Country. So in a, for those that know that area uh, in, in a town called Dudley, um, live not too far away from home. You know, the apple very uh, rarely falls far from the tree. Yeah. Uh, and have, yeah, enjoy life in the West Midlands. Yeah, no, it's it, it is it is a little bit like a bombs hit it, um, but nobody noticed. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It's, it, <laughs> other than that, it's a lovely place. Um, That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, it's, it is nice. My uh, my brother lives down that sort of general area, but um, and he oh, went to fantastic. went to uh, a, a sort of a teaching college in Walsall, which is I think is oh, okay. also the the Black Country. That's right. Yeah. So um, I, I knew a little bit about it when I was a kid, but um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, welcome, Dave. And and, and you've made your way. And, and w- one of the things we want to talk about today is your book, which it's called. It's a fantastic title, by the way. It's called Fueled, Fit and Fired Up. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that yes, that that all started um, as as Kevin um, sort of uh, mentioned earlier. Um, we've got a mutual friend in in Michael Heppel, yeah. um, and um, yeah, back in twenty nineteen, just before the pandemic hit, I was just tired of being tired. I was you know felt all exhausted all the time. So I decided to change um, uh, the way I was looking after myself and my lifestyle. Yeah. So predominantly looking at how I was keeping myself fit and what I was eating really and and say so the usual the usual January you know new new year new me sort of stuff started and then yeah. the pandemic hit and uh, I happened to join one of Michael's other groups called how to be brilliant yeah um having seen Michael speak at one of the previous previous businesses um and as part of that group and, and other things that were happening, I started sharing what I was doing with other people. You know, it was a, it's a great community to be part of. We were yeah. all trying to get ourselves through, you know, as we all experienced an incredibly difficult situation that we found ourselves in during the pandemic. And I just started sharing a few bits and pieces, had no intention of writing a book. Somebody said, oh, you ought to write a book about this. And I was going, no, not really interested. And then um, joined a pop up that Michael had done called write that book. And uh, within a week of doing that, I'd got the title of the book written the first chapter and couldn't really turn back from there really Grant. So so I've ended up uh, publishing the book. Well, now Kevin's been threatening, haven't you, Kevin, to do something similar? Yeah. And funnily enough, David and I had met on zoom after I joined team 17, but Michael actually did an event in Annick a couple of weeks ago. Uh, which will be a lot longer than a couple of weeks ago by the time you're listening to this, dear listener. (laughs) Uh, But Michael Heppel did something very clever, and he crashed a book festival to give the keynote address, which was called How to Write That Book, and he turned it into a book launch of his own book. Now, if you listen to our episode of the podcast with with Michael, you'll you'll realise he's quite an infectious sort of guy. And... uh, how can you walk out of an hour and a half's presentation about write that book without having kind of committed yourself mentally to write that book? Difference to Dave is that I haven't got a title. I've got about four possible books that it might be. <laughs> and I'm still thinking. And I'm flat out in a product launch at the moment. So I've got zero time to actually do anything. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a very readable book, Kevin, and uh, we all wait with bated breath. The thing is, uh, we've got a guy on the podcast who's actually written a book. So basically, you um, it didn't take you long to do your first chapter, Dave, but how long did it take you to sort of complete, you know, the, the first uh, cut of the book? Yeah, so I started, uh, started writing the book in October 2020. Um, and I'd already got obviously got a, a lot of content that I'd, I'd produced as part of the things I was sharing on social media. And that's quite a good way of, of, of creating content for a, for a book. Anybody out there who's listening, who's, who's thinking about doing it. Um, and then I, so I started that program, joined the Write That Book program itself. And by 
January the following year, I'd actually completed the first sort of draft, which actually ended up being about 60,000 words, which right. actually was quite quite a relatively short short time frame, really. Hmm. But, well, I mean, at, at the end of the day, 60,000 words, is, it's it's it's. It's quite a quite a number of words, but like you said, you you kind of got some of the content already uh, right. that you, you were able to flesh out and sort of join together in in in, in, a, to, in a in a way. Now, you the the whole purpose of this is to unleash the power of a healthy life. Well, can you just sort of break that down for us? I mean, without necessarily giving away all the book, but at the end of the day, <laughs> what what is it about, really? Yeah, so it's it's about creating new habits, really. That are, that are sustainable, that allow people to take uh, ownership of their own sort of health and well-being, I suppose. And I, I often describe it as being a regular book for regular people. And by that, what I mean is it, it talks about accepting the fact that we, you know, we're, ne- we're not always perfect when it comes to our health. But actually, if we, if we are more healthy than unhealthy, we're going to be making improvements to our our lives so it focuses on a little bit around mindset and habit building it shares uh, techniques such as beat the week which is about having more good days than bad days uh, and it also shares some exercise and recipes so it's really a sort of a um, a book that people can dip in and out of as they see fit right okay and 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 have, uh, has it been out long enough for you to have a had any feedback from people who've uh, been shall we say coached by it yeah so I, I, yeah so the book book was published in um may 2021 so it took me about three months between completing the first draft and getting it getting it published yeah. um i see a self-published through amazon um i've been lucky enough to receive some fantastic reviews um you know on, on amazon from from people who were where you know, they've come to me or they've reached out to me via social media and said it's been, um, you know, somebody described it as life changing, which is actually quite, uh, you know, an, an awe inspiring piece of feedback for somebody to to, yeah. to, to receive about something but, that you've done. And, if if you take out your mum and, and and you know what she said about the one, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but, no, no yeah. seriously, no, I, I my uh, <clears throat> no seriously, that that is really nice to get that feedback, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's, it's fantastic. And, and, and I can actually all joke aside about sort of a family and friends and, and people like that. Is I still remember the day that that somebody contacted me about my book and it was somebody that I'd not actually met or didn't know through um, through the writing course. Or it wasn't one of my friends who bought it or, or, or my family and stuff. And, and actually, again, I think when you start, uh, you know, any any published authors who, who, are, who are listening to this or, or you know or, or will probably appreciate this that you you get to a point where you just sort of start receiving feedback from people that you don't know and you just go well my book's out there in the big wide world this is helping people and you know as I said earlier the intention was never to write a book but when I decided to write a book I'd have been happy if just one person had bought it and if that had been my mom that would have been brilliant but you know I've been lucky enough to sell you know you know um quite a few quite a few copies and, yeah. um, and and got some great feedback from it. Do, does this lead to a different way of um, behaving, if you like, in, in business for you? Yeah, yeah, it does. I think a little bit, and and I suppose the whilst the the the, the business that I run isn't necessarily focused on health and well being, whereas the book is. It you know, the general principle is that the the most important resource in any organisation is the people. So actually, if the people, if you're not looking after the people within your organisation or you're not looking after yourself as an individual, yeah. you yeah. can't operate at, um, at, at, I suppose, at peak for, for as regularly as you would like to do. So that so there, yeah. there is a link, but you're quite right. It's about changing your behaviours and, and more so understanding the impact some decisions could have on your body and yeah. acknowledging that and going, actually, it's OK to do. You know, it's okay to continue to eat chocolate as not as long as you're not having six Mars bars a day and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So yeah, I don't know about you, Kevin, that uh, I'll have to cut down on the on the on the on the chocolate. <laughs> but um, it's, no, it's, I'm it's, Graham Stan. I know you're 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 in excess of those six Mars bars, so you're going to have to do something about that. <laughs> I, don't want that. I, I couldn't possibly do that. But uh, but no, no, seriously, I do think that. I mean, you're not a medical doctor as such, but you, but you basically, or I have you got medical training? No, no. So so that's that's why I describe it as, as I suppose a regular book for regular people, and I make that right. point right right at the beginning of the book. Yeah. That I've got no, 
um, medical training. I've got yeah. no fit, fitness qualifications either. What I'm doing in the book is really sharing stuff that I've done, I've tried, and and some of the stuff has stuck for me. Some of the stuff, I'll be honest, hasn't. But yeah. I wanted to share everything I'd tried. So there's an honesty good. about that, isn't there? And and that that will appeal to people, won't it? And yeah. it it and have you noticed whether or not it's been picked up by people? I mean, if it's on Amazon, it could be anywhere, couldn't it? I guess people reading this book. Yeah, so I've, yeah, I've been lucky enough to sell copies in uh, in America, uh, Norway, Denmark, uh, Australia, Canada, uh, mainland Europe, and obviously and obviously the UK. Yeah, uh, and, and and so therefore that immediate. In fact, to be honest, that uh, quite a, well, I think it's quite a funny story. Is as soon as I sold a book that was outside England, so which was actually in Scotland, I just started describing myself as an international author, um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Like so by, by chance, the 12 copies of the book you've sold have all been in different countries. That That's great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing who you can find on the internet, Kevin, who, uh, who, will, uh, who, who will buy a copy of somebody's book they've never heard of. Now, yeah. Amazon will have it listed, but it, it, I mean, it might have been up there in the rankings initially when it, when you first sort of got it to, to market, but um, how would people find it now? Are you doing constant sort of advertising of the book? Um, yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, there's an, there's an element of me sort of talking about it on podcasts like we like we're doing today. Sure. Um, I share I share some things on on social media um, uh, in terms of just reminding people the books out there. Um, yeah. I'll talk I'll talk about it uh, as a specific subject matter within keynote keynote talks that I do. Um, yeah. But as you say, it's, it's available on Amazon. I self published as well. So 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 Amazon, unless you contact me directly, Amazon is the only. Yeah. Um, source to market, I suppose, for and it. So when people, I mean, you, I mean, you're a, a a coach, aren't you? In a sense, so basically, when people, I mean, the book is almost like a, hey, um, I've got some skin in this. So yes. it, it, you're going, yeah. you're going to. In, uh, I mean, first of all, your clients probably you'll you'll send them a copy of this prior to meeting you, or or is that something that you do? Uh, yeah, it's it, it's something it's something I have done, and I, and I think it's 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 an interesting one because the the, the business itself is more around the uh, strategic planning and business development type frameworks that I've learned during my corporate career. Right. Which which the book sort of feeds into that bit around the people being the important resource, and so right. therefore, if we if the conversation comes around to talk about health and well-being in the workforce yeah my book coupled with the fact that i've also lucky enough to be a non-exec director at a, at a mental health and well-being charity means okay. that i've got as, as you say i've got some skin in yeah. the game as it were and some some experience and knowledge that can help my clients navigate that particular challenge if that's what they're looking to to get through you seem to have lots of different sort of um feathers in your cap don't you yeah. and you know and a non-exec non-exec etc and you working at a charity and mm. you know you, you've got that strategic understanding of business um you obviously like kevin and i both worked in 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 corporate and then correct we jumped ship you're another one aren't you so <laughs> yeah. tell us about what what was that moment for you when you took yourself out of corporate did you just get fed up of it or what happened yeah, so again, it goes back to the pandemic, really. So at right. the time, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to work for a number of large PLCs in in, the, in, in and around the West Midlands. And at the right. time, I was in hospitality. So right. as you know, the pandemic, hospitality closed down. A uh, yeah. little bit little bit of time, time on my hands, although we, we did a lot of stuff uh, in terms of frameworks and foundations for the business. And, but what I found was I've got a lot of, friends and contacts in business who were coming to me going right. dave you work for a big business yeah uh, tell me about how do i how do i navigate the furlough scheme what c bills all about I, I need some help getting myself through these challenges so i was doing a little bit i suppose volunteering as it were during the pandemic yeah. helping helping people that i knew all people who've been put in touch with me um and then sort of as as we as we progressed through 2020 and 2021 and people were starting to come back out of the pandemic, as it were, and reopening businesses. These people came back to me again and said, look, you know, we now need some help to understand how we're going to stabilise coming out of it. So it started, it was basically a side hustle. It, right. you know, and, and, and I carried on doing that. But I was really enjoying the 
um, you know, the community element to it. You know, as you said, I've got a lot of feather, feathers in my, on my, in my cap and they all tend to be focused around helping organisations and the communities that I've grown up in and have helped me get to where I am today. Uh, and I was enjoying it and I was thinking to myself, oh, there's something, there's something in this. So I started, it, started exploring it and eventually, as, as I'm sure the two of you experienced, you get to a point where you go, I can't really do these th two things together. I'm really enjoying working with these smaller businesses, helping them grow and helping them thrive, helping them recover. Let's mm. go and give this a go. And, yeah. and the rest, as they say, is history. It's, 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 it's a story that keeps cropping up on the next 100 days, isn't it, Kevin? Oh, it is. It is. And I, I think... That there's a big thing for us, Graham, about talking to people who've done that corporate escape. And so we, we go back to the topic of, of book. And one of the things that I've been toying with is what do you do in your first 100 days mm. after you leave corporate? Or even what do you do in the last 100 days while you're still in corporate? Yeah. yeah. Um, both, both of those are potential topics to, to, to start thinking about. No, I, There's I, a I subject think, that, that yeah. fascinates me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you have gone on about that for a long time, Kevin. It's a bit like your love for Newcastle, if you keep going on about them as well, as if, as if they were any good. But basically... Yeah, well, um, we've got to watch out here, otherwise we could end up in a long conversation about West Bromwich Albion as well. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, no, I, well, I mean, I suppose they're, they're an honest team and they've got a good manager, of course. Um, but yeah. um, but no, seriously, though, I, I think um, this idea of you jumping from uh, business... It's not been that long, has it, Dave? But I mean, would no. you jump back if 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 would you, would you ever go back into corporate? Um, I don't think I, if I'm being honest, I don't think I would, Graham. I think yeah. I, I think as I'm sure a number of people you've spoken to have done the same thing that we've done. He says that there's an element of um, you know the excitement about what you're doing and, and the whole you know yeah. love what you do by doing what you love and all, all yeah. of those sort, sort of things. And and, yeah. and I think you know uh, you just get get into a a zone, as it were, of, of of doing doing what you really really enjoy, and it's helping people, and you just you just get used to it, and it and it just grows grows from there, you know. Well, you, and I think you, your book says fired up, and it's obvious that you're fired up, so it's not likely that you'd want to jump back into. Yeah. No. I, I don't know. I, I don't really want to call, call it a security blanket because it isn't. I mean, cor mm. yeah, corporate life can be quite damage. Uh, um, challenging in many yeah. ways um but um but but so can working for yourself but there is there's a benefit to working for yourself you've only got to look in the mirror that's the only <laughs> idiot that you've got to look after isn't it i mean um but but uh, usually anyway so um and, and and apart from your clients but but from um the, the book's point of view it's a fantastic way of actually giving you credibility within that sort of caring for people area Correct. so it, are you targeting businesses who, for whom that would be a, a good thing? Is this something that you can sort of link the strategic understanding and this book to target that particular area of business? Yeah, yeah, it it, it, it works. It, it works in in both ways. Really, is that the is that the book or the the knowledge that I share in the book and the type of people that I'm already working with naturally attracts like like-minded individuals yeah. um but also it becomes a an additional i suppose uh, resource for me as a consultant going into a business to say well actually you know as well as doing the, the strategic business planning and brand planning programs that that, that i that i deliver you know there's also an element of this is a holistic view of your business so actually you know let's talk about you know uh corporate social responsibility or you know esg strategies you know all the corporate buzzwords and and well-being is now finally thankfully for me becoming more of a corporate focus for, for people because i think to, to, to the point you made earlier graham you know the, the corporate world it's 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 a hamster wheel running at 100 miles an hour quite often and, and, and actually you know having that time to be able to take a step back and and focus on your people within an organization and make sure that you're providing them with all of the support they need around their well-being is hugely important and crucial actually to the future in my opinion crucial to the future success of the the business as well you, on, on your website i don't know if you notice this kevin but you're on your website you've got this uh, these three things called one called collaboration another partnership and another innovation 
collaboration that you talk about working together uh, we explore the solutions to uh, uh, to your business challenges so um this is all about your uh natural curiosity isn't it i suppose you feed yeah. that now, this is how you get to the bottom of things yeah exactly yeah exactly that you know my my um background from our sins is that i qualified as an accountant back in the um right. late 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 90s early 2000s and then as, as i always sort of jokingly say i never did any proper accountancy after that because i was in i was in industry yeah. i went straight into doing more what i always describe as commercial business partnering roles so right. therefore i'm helping non-financial people understand the commercial impact of their decisions that immediately means you've got to be curious about the way the business operates, you know, and and so therefore, yeah, that, that curiosity I've always I've always had it within me, uh, and yeah. now I just I just use it in a in a slightly different but very similar way to to, to corporate life. Right. So and, and go, going on to partnership, then uh, you you talk about a long term commitment to help you create your um, future business success stories. So it's interesting that you use the word story. Because whatever story you, you're telling yourself is probably informing the way in which you're behaving. So, which probably feeds into the book anyway. But, um, you what do you mean by partnership in this respect? So, for me, it's about sort of again similar to collaboration. It's about working together, but actually forming that bond with the organisation. So, right. what I deliver is a program that not only would would deliver a a number of facilitated workshops and, and a plan at the end of it with clear actions for the t- the senior leadership team to deliver. Yeah. I'll then stay with that business until they've seen that plan through for however long it is to go right. back and almost keep the teams accountable. Because I think what I've ex- in, in the past, what I've experienced is that quite often the reason people don't work on their business is because they haven't got the time to. So they immediately in, ask the likes of us as consultants to go in and help help support them. But then when you walk away, they've still not got the time to actually take action. So, so for me, it's, it's, yeah. These these workshops then that you've got, do, do, is it invariably you're starting with the top team and effectively you, you're getting into their heads um, yes. so that – you know, you, it, and then what you're saying, you stick around long enough to make sure that they're actually you, you're their um, accountability. Guy. Correct. Um, yeah. So, at, at the same time, the, this third area that you talk about, which is innovation, develop new ways to deliver success for you and your business, does that come out of those sessions, or is that something that's slightly different? Um, I think it's it, it's a bit of both, to be honest, Brian. So I think yeah. sometimes what I have found is, uh, as with with you know with with everybody, we've all got transferable skills, yeah. and also the, the having such a wide range of clients as I've got at the moment means you see different things in different yeah. um, environments that you can then go, oh, actually, yeah. why why haven't why haven't these people over here thought about doing that in their business because that would work equally well? So it's sort of it's sort of a combination of brand new things, which is what I suppose what real innovation is, or it's applying innovative solutions from elsewhere for a particular yeah. sector. Yeah. So, is that something that you you might have an example of uh, in a particular business? Is that, is that something that you can? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I'll actually use my, my an application of my corporate experience in, in, okay. in, my, in my new new business. So yeah. as I said, I'd spent. Um, the last 17 years of my corporate career working in hospitality. Yeah. So um, what that's allowed me to do is obviously gain a real in, in understanding of how to market a business from a retail perspective, sure. the impact of social media, the impact of websites, the impact of all of those, all of those good things. Um, and I've taken on a, a, I've got, I'm, I'm a client where I'm actually a non-exec director at as well. That's yeah. a small family run equestrian center okay um and and the the couple who own it they bought it um and they've got no experience of um business to consumer so i came in and said right i can help you i can help you with this because we've got all of these solutions that i've used in hospitality that's going to work equally well for you not only marketing your equestrian um uh, products and services but also build a retail offering for them and a website and all so that it's, sort it's a of sort of it, it, this innovation is some sort of like a, a tray that people have on 
on them when they're galloping around. So <laughs> burger and chips. <laughs> that's exactly, and, and a, a hold of uh, the point, that's a more important thing. <laughs> I, uh, I have a neighbour who, who looks after a horse and she's out, out first, first thing in the morning. I've got to say, it's a real commitment if you've got a it horse. It is, it is. Um, and uh, and they've just ever since she was a kid, she's she's just loved horses. But I I, I think that passion for for, for people in in a, that circle of horses, equestrian equestrianism, mm. etc. People just love horses, and they'll do anything for them. Um, so your experience in hospitality has enabled them to bring more people to their um, correct to their stables. Is that is that yeah. basically what you're? Yeah, doing? yeah, that's that's exactly it. And I think as well is what you've there's also an element of you know there's there's some really really great space office space within oh. the within the um unit so again bringing ideas to them around what what can you use that space for so yeah. it's not just about delivering sort of try it's delivering training for the for the actual school itself to go well actually yeah. can you can you link with the local community yeah. offer that as a meeting room for example building corporate partnerships for the equestrian yeah. center which is then led on to us deli- um starting a uh, a charitable sort of foundation as it were to help support mm-hmm. local um SEND school students right. and also deliver some um uh, equine therapy for injured military personnel as well so right. it's sort of all bringing lots of things together all in a very small geographical I- space I, I don't know about you, Kevin. I, I, I can. You've got a particular. I, as we talk in, it become is becoming more and more obvious the kind of market that you're actually serving in a way. And 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 because I, I, when I looked at your website, and, and this is not a criticism, it's just I was trying to work out exactly who you're serving. Yeah. And I think what you're what you're actually um, sort of expressing here is that there's um there's you know there's a charitable aspect to this, but there's also the people. The people aspect of it, yeah. Um, but you, you're you're there for the, I want to say the the life's underdog, somebody who's had it a bit tough, um, mm. and and you're you're stepping in in a business way, to to bring if you like joy to their lives. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good way of looking at it. Is that yeah, it, it goes back to that real sense of businesses that are looking to make an impact in the community and i keep using that word community because that's a huge you know huge passion of mine and and anybody who's looking to make that difference so whether it be as i said the 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 riding school that i'm involved with where it's whether it's the non-league football club that i'm involved with whether it's the um that'll be west rom will it it? (laughs) to be fair if we're not careful it could have been it could have it could have been quite rapidly but we'll yeah we might come on to that a little bit later or or whether it's some of the larger um uh, clients that i've got that operate in sectors that are influencing different communities that, sure. that's that's the bit for me is, is it's all about the people and giving back and, and trying to make everybody's life better what made what made you so interested in people then um, i think it's i think it's my curiosity so because of the roles that i've historically done in a corporate environment where you get to know people who work in marketing who work in it who work in operations who work in property is that i've just got this as i said curiosity about people and what they do and why they do what they do and what choices they've made and and so therefore i've just gone you know it, 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 i just loved i just love being yeah. around people so we can check this because kevin and you obviously were together recently you know yeah. so, so did, <laughs> did dave go around bumping into people like, and, or is oh, he yeah, truly definitely. very truly definitely. a people yeah. person <laughs> And I, what, what fascinated me was how Dave seemed to know everybody that was there. Ah, there yeah. you are. Yeah. And is that a, ne- a networking skill that you that you've uh, that you've built, or it's maybe not networking? It's more about um, curiosity and getting to know people really quickly and being open yeah. with yourself, vulnerable if you like, about being you with it, with other people. So, you, are you an extrovert in some way, or a, a, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would I would certainly describe myself as an extrovert. You know, yeah. I, I I enjoy being, um, you know, if you know whether whether it be talking to you guys today over over in a virtual world or whether it's face to face, like when, when I saw Kevin at, at Annie, and I think it's just a, I don't I wouldn't say it's necessarily a networking skill, although it does work very well in a t- more traditional networking environment. It, it's always for me a bit my first thought is right i need to understand a little bit more about these people to understand how i can help them 
Yeah. And what, what how, how can I, you know, whether it be, you know, putting them in touch with, you know, for example, this week I've put somebody in touch with a, a lady who does fantastic neon lights that will work fantastically well in their shop and just, just linking people together. And, and in order to do that, you've, you've got to be open and vulnerable and be yeah. happy to, to speak to people, you know, in, in right. a, in a great way. And and if you if you looked at the book and and you almost had the sort of the outline view of it, what what are the key messages that people who who, who and we'll put a link in the show notes to this book. What are the kind of key messages that they might get? And I know you said you can dip in and out of it, but yeah. you know what what are the big takeaways that people maybe have had, but also will get? Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me that number one is about you know nobody's perfect so don't ever expect to be you know you know you can't you can't go from having never run a single yeah. step to then going oh, i'm going to go and run 10k on january the first mm-hmm. or next monday or, when, yeah. or whenever you whenever you choose to start yeah. um so so actually if you you know don't beat yourself up if you're not delivering what you're expecting to it's all about building it up and i think that leads to the second one which is about remove what i describe as removing the mood hoovers from your life so whether it be people who t- drain your energy or whether it's things that drain your energy yeah. so one of the things i talk about in the book is getting rid of the bathroom scales right. because the worst thing you can do is conti- in my opinion is continually wait be weighing yourself because you'll just get frustrated when things aren't going to plan yeah. and then probably the third thing is is actually is, is probably hydration and, and and actually how important mm-hmm. staying hydrated is just for your general health and well-being you know it yes. helps suppress appetite quite often when people go and grab a snack from a cupboard it's because we're dehydrated yeah. not because we're hungry mm-hmm. you know it helps keep our you know our body physically sort of lubricated as it were from a yes. you know muscles and an and energy capacity and that can make a real big real big difference to people and have you noticed yourself doing more exercise type things as a result of almost like living living your own words? Yeah, it's quite interesting. It sort of also once you put something in writing and then published it to the world, you've sort of that is the ultimate accountability for you as an individual. Yeah, yeah. So, so therefore, am I? You know, am I wary of what I'm doing? And, and, and yes, most certainly. You know, most certainly, yes. You know, I focus very heavily on having or have focused very heavily on getting a morning routine that works for me okay. um and, and 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 actually the the habit building part of it is now sort of morphed into what i describe as stackable habits so okay. things you can do at the same time so you know it might be uh you know um when having a trigger that says right when you get up in the morning and i, I don't know whether you guys have got i know kevin's got a I've got dogs, but you know, if you're getting up in the morning, you're feeding the dogs, and you're waiting for me, you send them outside. As you know, you sort of do a few squats in the kitchen, or you're prepping a prepping a healthy meal for the for, for lunch. and try and make the most of all of those moments. Ordinarily, we may just have picked our phone up, checked yeah. our messages, gone onto social media, and just create a more healthy habit that links with those other things that you're doing during the day. That sounds mm-hmm. like, it's like you say it's really practical stuff and a it's lot of practical very, stuff there yeah. yeah so dave you've clearly been on quite a journey you're in big corporate you've left big corporate you've set a business up you've made the success of that business you've come to a decision point around your own health and well-being and started blogging about it which led to writing a book which led to yeah. becoming a published author just describe for me a little bit more that Dave at the start of that journey. What 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 position were you in, and what what triggered all of this? Um, I think it was I think it was that element, as I mentioned earlier, that I'd got to a point I think in my corporate career where that that hamster wheel was starting to affect me physically and mentally. And that being, as I mentioned the phrase earlier, tired of being tired. And and there, and I, that, that's what triggered the lifestyle change. That then helped me cope better with the pandemic 
But I think ultimately, to answer, to get a roundabout way to answer your question, Kevin, is it's actually, I think the pandemic was the real trigger point for me. And as it has been for a lot of people who've walked away from various different careers in various different places to do something different, is that, the, it, it, you know, don't get me wrong, a lot of people, you know, it was a very, very horrible time for a lot of people. But if there's one positive I can take from it is that, A, it made me think about what I was doing in life. It gave me an opportunity to help people that maybe I wouldn't have ordinarily been able to take mm. uh, under normal circumstances. I had I, I was afforded the time by the industry that I was working in, being completely closed down to work to work on things. And I found it quite interesting. Earlier, you mentioned you know the first hundred days. And, and, you know, and I think actually there's a bit about what are the what are the last hundred days like or the first hundred days while you're still doing another job when it comes to setting up your own your own business. And, and, and so I think that was the thing that really triggered it all was that time that the pandemic gave me to mm. connect with people who, you know, um, that I would never have met. So, Kevin, we probably would never have come across each other if it hadn't been for me joining a group that happens to be run by someone who we both know in Michael. And there's lots of people who I'm now mm. working with and helping yeah. that I've, I've connected with through that pandemic or been introduced to by people who I've met. I, I know that one of the things that um, um, in, in, in on your website, it, it, somebody was talking about the Power Within Us uh, podcast and you were on their podcast. And one of the things mm. that I mentioned is that you go through techniques that will enhance your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Yeah. And I was thinking, um, physical, I get. Mm. Emotional and mental, I'm just thinking, how different are they? Well, I think there's there's, there's two things there for me. There's the, the emotional well-being, is, for me, is about how we react to situations. Right. And so, therefore, being able to bring us... I suppose back into the presence. So in the book, I talk about mindfulness. I talk a little bit about uh, meditation. There's a chapter completely on breathing, and for me, it's right. those sort of things that I suppose ground us in right. that emotional sense. Right. Versus mental well-being being more about <clears throat> the stimuli that we're getting bombarding us every day through social media and and, and managing that as I taking a break and getting out and actually for me all three you know are, are, are linked together because you know getting out and walking for example is mm. not only helping your physical health it's clear it's clearing your mind yeah. it allows you to be more mindful about the the, the surroundings and particularly for out in nature highly recommend getting out and you know walking in, walk in nature for people yeah. um I th yeah i think that's how it, it all links together really mm. yeah I, I i i i'm not sure whether social media is a good thing or a bad thing mm. Mm. i think it. i think it depends on what on 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 what you are using it for as an individual mm. so the thing the thing that's always stuck with me and i can never remember what podcast I was listening to or what interview I saw it. I can't even remember who actually said it, but they said, you know, you choose the people that you follow. Hmm. So actually, you know, if there's, if, if you're getting negative influences from social media or you feel it's negatively impacting, then take a look at who you're following. You've yeah. got that choice and that decision to make, you know, uh, uh, you know, about it. And actually if you connect with the right people, you know, as as you know, as Kevin as Kevin and I have through Team Seventeen. Team Seventeen's got a lot of fantastic individuals in it. Actually, we we're on social media all the time, and we post on a Facebook group, and we're yeah. on Zoom and all that sort of stuff, and we share each other's posts and are connected on LinkedIn and all that good stuff. Actually, social media becomes hugely powerful yeah. to, to help people connect and, and and spread and spread their word. But I take yeah. your point about yeah. It, 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 it yeah, depends how you how you use it. I think. Yeah, I think probably back in the sort of seventies uh, uh, and and maybe parts of the eighties that you know people would be mean if they were really going to be mean, but they would be mean to you. Yeah. Um, but now they're mean sometimes through social media yeah. to you, and there's there, there would have been a way in which you could block them off, which is you close your door. <laughs> but now not not so much, particularly for children, and and um, and. That bothers me. It, you know, I, I don't know. 
I mean, what kind of society really wants to encourage that kind of thing? And, um, you know, and, and, and what kind of people are, be how people becoming like that to hurt others in yeah. that way, um, really quite, uh, uh, challenging. Um, but you are right. There are positives, aren't there? I mean, you, yeah. like you say, you and Kevin got to know, and, and it's the same way. I mean, I, I think we, Kevin, you and I have met about three times. I was you know, that's right podcast for it seven was, years through a, a similar community to team 17 that you and i met yeah. we we ended up chatting ended up doing podcasts together and i i think what was it was episode 25 of the podcast before we'd ever actually met in person yeah i i've i've kept the the meet the physical meetings to an absolute meeting <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, um, but no, 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 no. Actually, actually, I, I got to say, I, I'd love to meet Kevin more often. Now, to be honest with you, because he's, he's, he's always been a really good friend. And, and from my point of view, it's, a, it's a shame that he lives so far north. And I know what would happen. He'd only talk about his football club, and you know, it just becomes so annoying. But you, uh, you're, I'd probably I'd, try and take Graham to watch a decent football match. You know, well, there's some interesting uh, football being played. I, I'll be watching some decent football on the weekend, but it won't be played by Leeds United. That's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, what can I say? Um, it's one of those things. Um, we might pass each other in the night. You know, West Brom go up and we go down. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah never mind. Um, but you know, if you had to say to yourself, what what's the big thing that you want to be able to do with the rest of your life? Um, you know, you've now got yourself into a place where you're, you've got this potential to influence a lot of people through your fueled, fit and fired up book and the things that you're doing around that. How do you see yourself over the next few years and for the rest of your uh, working life? How, well, what is it the thing you want to do? Yeah, that's a massive question. That is, Graham. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it's, it's continuing doing what I'm doing, which is always have the... Um, uh, I suppose the the goal giver mentality to, to pinch a Bob Bob Berg's um, book book title um, and, and actually just carry on trying to help people where where wherever I can uh, yeah. and help give back to you know particularly the local community that has served me so well in getting yeah. me to where I am whether it be through helping the edu you know the schools and the education system or whether it be helping local businesses through my consultancy or whether it be helping the the, the, the charitable aspect of the mental health and well-being that's that's what i'm really really want to achieve over the next over the next next few years I, i've just opened one of your posts that you've uh, shared on i think it's twitter and it was, it was saying take a full breath in and out before replying to others yeah wow i mean that's quite a, a good piece of advice i don't know about you kevin but um i, yeah. I wish i'd have met <laughs> and, and heard that <laughs> advice a long time ago um but um, is that the sort of thing that you would practice yourself if you're sharing that content? Yeah, it, I think it's important for me that you've got to be authentic with what you're doing. You know, so there's again, as I said, there's, there's nothing in the book that I haven't tried. I'm, sure. I'll, I'll hopefully admit there's stuff that I've tried that didn't quite work for me. But, yeah. you know, that sort of stuff. But those sort of things, I'll always share stuff on social media that I will either have done, tried, genuine, genuinely believe, genuinely think would make, make a difference. And, and I if, think it's, sorry, if, if, if making the difference, if you take that making a difference, who would be the your ideal client that you would want to make a difference for, and and how would they get in touch with you? Right. So I think from my perspective, an ideal client is someone who's probably gone through their startup phase, but are then looking to scale. Right. You know, across any any industry, the the, the work that I do can operate in in, in any. In, yeah. in 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 any industry and people can reach out to me they can get in touch with me via my uh, website fueledfitandfiredup.com via linkedin where you can just search for dave rogers the business explorer and you should come across my linkedin profile or any of my other social media i'm on as you said i'm on twitter facebook and and instagram uh it, I'm, I'm a very i'm a very difficult person not to find it's probably the best way to describe it. <laughs> or in person. Right? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Or if somebody's in the in the black country, feel free to try and find me at a, a local yeah. networking event. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's uh, it, it's well. I we've got all kinds of places, uh, all kinds of people who'll be looking uh, to do exactly that because I think you're you're you've you've kind of got so many things in your armory that you can help people with um, that business mind, but also that 
people side of it and practical things that people can do. So it's not not a big surprise to me uh, that today you've been a great guest on the Next 100 Days podcast. So another interesting corporate escape story, Graham. And it's amazing how the pandemic affected so many people and caused a rethink. And Dave describes that hamster wheel. I guess what the pandemic actually did was put a pair of brakes on the hamster wheel, brought it to a stop, and the hamster inside could have a look out and realize there's something other than the wheel. I think I think you're, 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 you're right in one of the chapters to this book that you're going to bring uh, bring about. Um, I, I think you're absolutely right. It was, the the um, um, pandemic was a, was a trigger for a lot of uh, people in business to, to reconsider uh, what the heck they wanted to do i mean if you give people time they're going to think and they're going to and they're going to weigh up different options and and a way of actually and because potentially people's income was 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 uh, being suppressed um they might naturally have been thinking side hustle and then that led to and that has led to um a change of direction for many people um and and some of it of course would have been forced through like you know in dave's case hospitality um was was shut down but some of the things that are now coming out as we're recording this um in uh we're recording it in march um um uh, you know some of the things that are coming out politically about what was said or potentially what was said um it's shocking uh and it's no big surprise i have to say to me um but it's uh, very very disappointed in the way in which our own government have treated the people of this country mm. anyway we'll leave that thought hanging graham we will. Um, but today, Dave's been a, an absolutely first class guest and he's got lots of um, uh, content that you can find about him. So you can find him on all of the social media and we'll put links to uh, most of those in the show notes. Um, but today I've been Graham Arrowsmith. I've been Kevin Appleby. Goodbye. Goodbye.